giving his third talk today. So I think he gets the crown for most talks at Python user group meetups uh, this whole year, maybe even in the history of Python user group meetups. <laughs> so uh, he's going to show us 30 things that we can do with Python. So let's have a round of applause for Shang and see what we can do with Python. Hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Yishen, or YS, uh, and then I'm going to be talking about 30 things you can do in Python. Um, as you guys probably know, Python uh, is very famous for two things. One is uh, server-side uh, code, uh, and the other is working with data, like data work, data analysis, data visualization, all this, data science. But is that all we can really do with Python? Um, I don't think so. So we're going to look at what else we can do with Python. Uh, the format here is that um, for each thing, uh, I'm going to go through exactly what our target is, what we're going to do, and then I'm going to show you the code. We're going to try to run the code if we have time. Um, I'm going to highlight the key functions which we are executing for each task, and then um, I'm going to say the task is finished, yeah. and then we'll move on to the next uh, task. Okay. Uh, also, before I start, is there a, can I get a show of hands? Uh, who here is like relatively new in Py uh, to Python? Oh my God, it's a very, 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 a lot of quite new faces here. Okay, so very good. Uh, I'll try and keep things uh, slower. Uh, not slower, but simpler. Okay. If you don't understand the code or anything, just uh, think about the objective and what we're doing in each thing. Okay. Uh, what, what we input and what's the output. Okay, let's start. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is this. Okay, so welcome to the world of Python. So we're going to start in the planes of uh, web development. We're going to make our way across the mountain range into the large lens of data science. As you can see, the lens of data science is the largest area in this world of Python. It's rapidly expanding. From there, we're going to move on uh, along the coast down to the province of NLP. And NLP is, of course, uh, natural language processing, uh, which is basically trying, uh, computers trying to make sense of language, which is basically just strings uh, to them. And from there, we're going to sail east towards the Isle of Chat, the Isles of Chat. Uh, then we're going to move north, uh, past the peninsula of app development, the islands of uh, images, the domain of physical locations, onto the other lands of the miscellaneous uh, tasks that we can do in Python. And we're going to end our merry journey across the mountain, mountain ranges again at the Volcano of Meta. Uh, the things that you can do uh, with your Python code in Python. Okay, so let's begin in the planes of web development. Great. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is not looking exactly like how I, it worked on my computer. Okay, so uh, this is Instagram. Uh, Instagram is powered by Django, and Django is uh, based in Python. So, and what that means is that Python is determining what posts get shown to you uh, when, as you scroll down your feed, and uh, what happens to your images when you post them onto Instagram. Uh, and everything about your account, everything in the logic is uh, handled by Python. Okay, so how do we build our own Instagram, right? I'm not going to do that in one minute. Uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you of that. But uh, here we're going to start a server. There's two libraries that we can use to do a web server-side code. I'm sure many of you know. There's Django and then there's Flask. So this is Flask. Uh, at the bottom, at the top right here, uh, this is our code, is our actual code. At the bottom, there's a terminal here, which I'm going to uh, make it bigger. And then we're going to uh, do a Flask run. By doing this, uh, we have now run this code. Basically, uh, the important thing here is this thing here. So the app.root saying that uh, whenever someone goes to this root, root is basically like a URL. When anyone goes to this URL, uh, they will we will serve them some data. And the data here is slithering, slithering. I forgot to mention that all our, as many of our uh, examples here will be snake themed because it's Python after all. Okay, so um, we can see 
our data that we served uh, at 5,000. And you can see the slithering, slithering, right? Okay, so that's the first thing done. That's how you make a web server in Python. Second thing is we're going to do data science. We're going to straight up go into the lens of data science. Uh, we're going to predict uh, the survival rate of someone who has the same profile as me if I was on the Titanic. Okay? As you guys may, may or may not know, uh, the Titanic was a situation where they had lots of people, the ship was sinking, but they don't have enough lifeboats. So some people had to die. Some people had to die. So who did you choose to die? So let's figure it out. Okay, so this is uh, data science. First thing we're going to do, main things we do is import NumPy, uh, Pandas, sklearn. Okay. Um, I won't go into exactly what they are. So here we use, we load in the data. But before I talk about loading in the data, what is data science, right? Data science is basically answering questions using data, right? And usually this comes in the form of uh, making predictions or judgments. And uh, yeah, first we have to feed them data. Okay, so here we're going to feed them data, and the feed data here is in a CSV form. I'm sure many of you, even if you're not doing programming, right, you know what is CSV because it's like a lousy, lousy Excel, right? It's Excel without formatting, <laughs> right? So we feed in the data here. This is, uh, what does this data look like? Now we can see. This data is, each row is a passenger. Then we can see all this data about them. We're going to use this data to figure out who lives and who dies. Right. Uh, then we uh, manipulate the data a bit here. Ignore, ignore, ignore. The most important thing here now is we're going to create a classifier. Uh, this is like a model. What are we going to use to, what type of mo uh, model are we going to create uh, to predict who lives and who dies. So this is a decision tree classifier. There's many types of model classifiers. We're going to use a decision tree classifier. Decision tree classifier. Uh, then we're going to fit the model. This is to train the model with the data. And then we're going to use the model now. Okay. So let me quickly load all of this, run all of this code. This is, uh, uh, this is a Jupyter notebook, same as what the earlier speaker was using. So we're going to use the model, clf.predict is, uh, is a key function. This is predicting if, and, and what is this predicting? It's predicting uh, for a person with these stats. These stats, these stats are basically my stats. I'm 30 years old, and then all these things are uh, what, what class I would have bought. So it says zero means I would have died. Okay, but we can do better than that. Uh, we can predict the probability at which we will, that I would have died. So the probability is that I would die at 60% chance, uh, probably a uh, 60% chance. So you say I probably died. Okay, so then we can also save the... We predict uh, survival using data science and Python. Okay, let's go to the next thing. Uh, Facebook improved upon this. They said that we can. They make it even easier to predict things. But they predict, they make it easier to predict uh, time value uh, data, okay? Data that is along a time series. Okay, so here we have, uh, they developed this thing called profit. So we import uh, FB profit, profit. Then we also load in some data. What does it look like? It looks like this. Every month there are some sales. These are the sales of snakes. Uh, not very really ethical, but okay. Uh, then we have the shape. This is uh, how many rows are there. This is how it looks like. And it's 293 rows. So we have uh, data from 1992 or we're going to predict 10 more years of um, the data. Okay, so we're going to do that and then wait for a little bit. And then it was really out there, yeah. Why didn't I just. Okay, so and then it shows us immediately. So with so few lines of code, it immediately shows us, it predicts that this is the range of outcomes uh, that the sales could tend towards in the next 10 years. Okay, so. Right, they made it extremely easy. Then after that, Google made it even easier by you don't even have to know Python. Now. Okay, so that's uh, that's what we have done to predict future sales um, using Python. Let's go next one is using deep learning now. So deep learning right is using neural networks, but it's also machine learning. Uh. All this is machine learning, data science, same thing. Uh. We create models to predict things, to predict things or to make judgments on things. Okay, so here we have a, a model that is that has multiple hidden layers. So what does this mean? It's like, uh, let's say you feel hot on a certain day. Does that make you happy or sad? It, but 
to a human, right, you, you won't really know, right? That just me happy as that. Maybe if you're in a sauna, hot is good, right? Right. So you must know sauna plus hot then is good. So th there's this hidden uh, possibility of sauna, which is like a hidden uh, uh, thing you must account for, right? There's a context there. And all these hid hidden layers, right, can account for the context. Yeah. So that's, uh, so it's like kind, kind of how our brain works. Okay, it tries to model how our brain works. Okay, but anyway, let's do uh, Keras. Keras, we import Keras. CV, I won't talk about CV2. Uh, we load all of this stuff. Okay. Uh, all this not very important. Uh, not very important, not very important. Not very important. Okay, so we can see model, sequential. You, this looks familiar, right? This is like the decision tree classifier. It's just a different type of model only. It's called a sequential model. Okay, then we compile the model and we fit the model on the training data. But then here, uh, okay, we fit the model and it's going to uh, train over all these cycles. And when it finishes, then it will uh, be fully trained. You can see the loss here as it tends towards zero or it tends lower, then it will be more and more accurate. Okay, uh, how this works, I will not go into it. Okay, so next, uh, I'm gonna have time for this, all this nonsense. So we're going to load a trained model. So you can load a trained model. This is just a file. You can just load a model and immediately use it. So now, right, in my, in my, uh, here, in my folder here, you can see, right, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to even tell you what, what we're even doing this time. We are using deep learning, right, to identify handwritten digits. Handwritten digits. Okay, so some people write four, right, look like five, right? Or some people like, right, five look like S, right? But all this thing, we are trying to get the machine to identify it. So now I have this, this thing here, you see, mystery number.png. See, you all don't know what it is, right? Compu computer also don't know what it is, but computer is going to find out. So the computer is going to, CV2 is going to read the PNG, and then using the model that is loaded, it's going to predict uh, what the, it's going to predict what the, okay, let me cancel this. Huh? Sorry? How do I cancel this? Huh? Okay. okay. Do, do, do. Okay. Ah, okay, so it says, I think this digit is a four with 100% confidence. Then we can go back to our mystery uh, number and indeed it looks like a four, right? So think about this. It took a number, right, a handwritten number, right, and it figured out there is uh, a, a certain digit. Right? So it's pretty cool. Okay, so that's, we have learned how to identify digits with Python. Let's continue on. We're going to make our code write code. Okay, so how does this work? This is uh, recurrent neural networks. So recurrent neural networks are kind of like machine learning as well. The only difference is that the recurrent part means that they, they have a memory of the inputs that were given to them earlier. So you give them a string of inputs and then they have a memory of all the inputs which were in, given in the past, right? Or not all the inputs, but a number of inputs which were given in the past. This probably doesn't make sense, but I'll just, it's just a brief overview. Okay, so this is very useful for strings. When you feed it a long, long string, it can figure out the, it has all the memory of string of uh, characters that you fed it previously, uh, gives it some context for what this, uh, this, this, this machine learning model should do. Okay, and of course, as I said, we are gonna make our code write code. So, um, hope for the best. Uh. Okay, no, uh, okay, so, so here we're gonna go, Cancel this guy. So, okay, so you do train.py, right? Basically, I have a huge file of uh, code. My entire code base is inside here. I'm not going to show you because my boss will kill me. Uh, okay, so this entire code base here is going to train, but of course, I'm not going to let it finish because then it'll be like tomorrow already. So, we are going to do another thing, which is sample.py. Uh, sample sample.py. And then sample.py, we have to tell, what does this mean? Uh, an extremely important thing I didn't mention is that this uh, recurrent neural network is a generative network, which means that it tries to generate new output, which is similar to what you have seen before. Okay, so it's going to
I read it fully trained, I created some, I see some code and I show you what it looks like. So you can see that it's trying to import stuff from whatever, whatever, and then it plots some stuff. It's trying to import stuff, I don't know why. Uh, but in this part, to, to assign stuff and do all that functions, it, it's not too bad for a, for a, for a baby machine. It's, uh, it's not too bad, but uh, of course, uh, as, you, as you tune it, it could get better. Right. Okay. So that, that's basically our code write code. So next thing we're going to do is uh, data visualization. Basically, we're going to show data in a nice way. And we're going to do this with OK in Jupyter Notebook. Uh, let's go back. I don't know why I'm going to select. Uh, close, close, close. OK. Okay, so here uh, we have. Okay, we are going to import pandas. Pandas are always used when we have uh, like a array like, uh, data frame like uh, uh, data. Then we import okay, which visualizes the data for us. Uh, and then after that, we log in the chart data. This is all the chart data that we're looking in. The rest is all like styling and creating the chart itself. Okay, so this is. Uh, you can see the periods, these are periods, and these are the values. We're going to create a vertical bar chart. And these are colors that we use to color the vertical bar chart. Uh, the important, uh, important function is figure. This creates the entire chart. Without figure, you don't create the chart. Then after that, we also need another one, which is V bar. This creates the vertical bars. It takes in your values, which are your uh, top, is your, 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 your values. So how high it goes, how high the vertical bar reaches, is the top. Okay, then after that, we output notebook and show it. Then we can show our nice visualization based on the just the numbers above. Okay, so now we have visualized stuff using Python. So now let's go on to number seven, which is uh, scraping. I already talked about this in my previous talk. So, web scraping is basically right. Uh, normal, normally, in the old style, you want to find out about architecture. You go into your green book, you click this one, then you read five seconds. Now, then you click the next one. You click inside, then you can read it with your Excel, then you go and copy the, the address, copy the name, all these things. Then you copy the company profile, all these things. So then you can click this thing and then copy the thing like that so you can spam them. But then, now right, we don't need to do that, we have new style already. So now the new style right is we use scraping. Right. So web scraping collect. So we're going to collect the data there programmatically. And then you use a spider, the main file that's actually writing is this one. So it's a green book spider. We start with this URL, which is exactly, exactly the same URL we started with earlier on. It's going to go into every single link from that URL at the start. And then after that, it's going to go into every single link from the next uh, sub subdivision. And then it's going to pass each of those uh, HTML and find the uh, related uh, data that we want phone number, text number, uh, emails. Okay. And uh, if we run it, it still looks something like. If we run it, it's going to look something like this. So it is going to go at its pace and then it's going to crawl this website and it's going to find the links and it's going to go on those websites, then it's going to go into those web pages, it's going to find the links and then you wait for one day and you come back and all your, all your data will be in the form of uh, all your data will be in back this. Right? So all your data will be in a CSV very nice video. Okay, so that's uh, web scraping. So we have scraped data using Python. Uh, then next we will do work out. So we can visualize a lot of entry into the lens of uh, NLP area, so language processing. Uh, so let's see how we do that. Let's cancel this guy. Okay, we cancel it again. Uh, okay. Okay. okay, so this is a work out. So uh, the important thing library that's in here is called work out. Okay, not very creative. Huh? So, but how? Then we're going to open a text. What is this text? I'm going to show you what it's like this. I got it from uh, Project Guten Tag. We have lots of free books uh, because I don't have much money, so I can get free books. So, 
this entire book is all about, you can just see it was states, right? So the states of Europe, and we're going to look the entire book into this text variable, and then we're going to uh, open a mask, which the Python will know. Uh, then we are just going to set this. We're going to say, define what the stop words. Stop words are basically like the words in English which are not very useful, like uh, the, and was not very meaningful. We're going to remove all those, and then the rest of them, we're going to create a word cloud. And we're going to show, we're going to store the word cloud in uh, snakes.png. So let's do that. Uh, actually, I'll be running with the other something like this. So you can see if you don't have it more. I cannot do more. Okay, but it looks still like a better world. Yeah. So you can see the bigger ones are the, the words which appear more often. So that's a word cloud. Okay, so now we have visualized text in a word cloud with Python. Next time we're going to do is uh, continue with natural language processing. We're going to identify key phrases in a piece of a passage of text. So this is a passage of text directly from uh, Wikipedia. So this about snakes, of course. Uh, we're going to use a library called text AC. Text AC uh, is derived from the another, another library called Spacey. But they just have the wrapper on top of uh, Spacey. Um, so this, okay, and then the key things we're going to do here is, actually, there's not much to see here because uh, it's really wrapping Spacey. Okay. So we, we, if we keep calling this module, we get the key terms and we rank them in terms of, in terms of significance. And ranks means uh, we're going to get uh, phrases up to four words long. Okay? And we're going to find which are the most in, uh, significant phrases. So let's run this guy. So after I run this guy, uh, it shows us this the text, and then it shows us uh, so this is the text. Huh? Then it shows us what the key terms. The key terms is the pit fighter, the smaller label kits, and pit groups, sensitive receptors. Okay, it's just all the nonsense like have all these stop words, some all these things. They figure out which are the most important phrases or significant phrases. It also tells us some interesting stuff like the readability. Uh, the most interesting thing I think here is the flash king kit, the grade level. Uh, which is basically saying what what age of kid in the US right, would be able to read this uh, comfortably. So here it's something like uh, uh, the drawn pen, which is around like set 3, set 4 of our uh, Singapore uh, context. Okay, so now we have identified the key phrases in the passage, in the text passage, from nothing like this, just a string to the computer, but we're turning it into uh, identifying important phrases. Is this the basis for the significance? Uh, that's a good question. I don't even know. I will find out if you want to find out. Okay. So, uh, then next time we can, we can do it even better. We can summarize the text straight from the HTML. Straight from HTML, we can use this thing called SAMI. So we do SAMI and we will talk about the stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is say language is English. Uh, we're going to summarize it into five sentences. So the use case here right, is when uh, your friend send you uh, or your boss send you some, some article, but then you scroll down and miss them long. Right? So you're going to read it, but then you want to know as well. So your boss asks you, you still know. Right. So you, this is your URL, you get this cluster. So this cluster this will tokenize it, tokenize it, it will take all the words inside there, and then it will uh, call the entire uh, text and turn it into tokens, which are like words or pockets of meaning. Then stammer is like, you got this, uh, maybe you have uh, eat, eating, the stem is eat. So the, the key meaning is eat. So you stem all the words. And then after that, you will summarize everything. Uh, you remove all the stop words. And then after that, it will give you a bunch of uh, summarized sentences. Okay, so here, let's see what happens when we run that. Okay. So then it gives us still a bit longer, but at least there's only five sentences. So you read. So it tells you uh, uh, there's two, there's two reasons you want to focus on the chemicals and matter. And it's quite okay. so still okay. So basically, yeah, it's still okay. uh, But it tries to spread. So we have extracted, it's still some meaning from a long passage using Python. Okay. 
Then next one, we're going to do a chatbot. A uh, chatbot is here. Okay, so a chatbot. Oops. This one. Close the sentence. Okay, so a chatbot, we're going to use the uh, library called Chatterbot. And we can import chatbot. First thing you need to do with chatbot is to train it. Right? Give it some responses, else it's not very interesting. It's like a baby. You talk to the baby about the baby, you don't know the same. Right? So here we have a chatterbot office trainer. It's going to train our chatbot. Uh, you can also train it uh, manually uh, with a list. So if you say hello, if you say hi there, you'll say hello. Uh, and then you can also train it with Twitter data. Like people, what people retweet other people or like reply other people into that and tweet on them. Okay, which is quite interesting as well. I didn't do it here. So, uh, chatbot, this is the name of our chatbot. And then we train it. After training it, then we run it. Let's see what happens. So now it's going to train like, uh, unfortunately this one's quite fast enough. So uh, we'll just bear with it. So yeah, it's a bunch of topics that you can talk about. Uh, so once it's done training, you'll ask me for some input. I'll say, how are you? Then you'll say, well, what is the best <laughs> So. Uh, then he knows his stuff. Right? So then we can do so now we have created a chatbot we can chat with. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is to mimic user trait. That's still on the left of NLP, the province of NLP, NLP, uh, NLP. Uh, and this is gonna be one next the next level again. Okay? So this script is going to go into Twitter, script uh, uses uh, tweets, and then after that it's going to um, Mark Hobbify them. Basically, it's like generate random tweets from uh, yeah, their original tweets. You're going to mimic somebody's tweets. You're going to mimic some tweets. And generate uh, fake tweets from someone. Okay, so I'm going to run it. The main thing is here. Um, yeah, we Mark Hobbify the text. So, we Mark Hobbify the text is to create the random uh, chains. Yeah, which will be like new tweets. Okay, so let's run that. This is going to be my boss. Oh. Number of tweets, not five tweets. Okay. So it's going to get tweets from my boss's Twitter account and then uh, try to predict what he's going to uh, give examples of what he would tweet like. Okay, so it says, we have no, no, no idea how this, this Fitment API is supposed to work, use, okay, which I can identify with him. Okay, then yeah, back to GPT. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. So it's like something like that, let's say. Okay, so, so we have mimic someone's tweets using Python. Okay, uh, next thing we're going to do is to uh, use Slack programmatically. Anybody here uses Slack at work or outside of work? One person, two person, three person, three person only. Yeah. Okay, but for the rest of them, don't use Slack today. Or if you don't know anything, just, just, just listen. Okay, so we're going to uh, import the Slack client, and from here we use a token, we give it a token. And this is the key part. So we create this um, SC, which is a Slack client. And then the key things here is we're going to call sc.api call. You can post message, you can get channel info, and you can add reactions. So I'm going to show you what the Slack is like. Currently, the Slack is here. Okay, so uh, it's just empty, pretty empty. I'm going to run this guy. Okay. 
and then he's going to say uh, some, some, some stuff. Okay. It, and, and he put up, up, and up, thumb and down, thumb. Right. And then if you like it, up, thumb, and down, thumb. Right. Okay, so that, that's just to mention. So, yeah, so it's just, just posting some random messages. Okay, but we can do better than that, right? We can create a Slack spot, which is what we're going to do next. So we have created the really interactive with Slack programmatically. Now we're going to create a Slack bot, which is going to respond when people uh, message you. Okay, so how do we do that? So now it's no longer typing nonsense video. I'm going to say that snakes uh, high. It's, it's, it's at least one of them is bound to not work at 30 years. So this one is not working, although it was working just now. I'm not sure I can't be back now. So I will just skip. I'll show you the code anyway. So the code here is uh so we indicated some authorization, uh, some authorization details, uh, don't copy mine. Uh, then again we're using the Slack client, then now we're doing a Slack event adapter so that you can respond to events. So if you uh, if you if you message the bot, it will reply to you. Right? So if it says if someone says hi, then it should reply with hello. And then if you do a yeah, yeah. select like the on message, which is the key time. On message, then you know, you will you will say your first message, hello. Hello who will uh, say hi. And then if you do a few other things, okay, but not working, okay, never mind. Let's move on. Okay, so that's uh, creating us like what? Next thing we're going to do is create, we're going to move straight into the uh, realm of um, app development. First thing is desktop apps. Desktop app, we're going to create a custom mode pack. This is a, what it's going to look like. Oh, this one was going to look like, but this is the code. We're going to use time cube 5. Uh, this pronounced as pi cube, I, I checked it. So, time cube 5, and then we will. Uh, it's basically a GUI library to allow you to create. Um, Graphical user interfaces for your programs. Right. Okay. And then the good thing about uh, Kaiki right, is that it has uh, a lot of very convenient uh, out of the box stuff for you to use. So there is a plain text edit here, which is kind of like a not tag already. But now we're just going to customize it. I'm going to customize it by adding our own little button, which is going to say, get snake. And this is the icon. Is the, is, this is the icon which is going to symbolize the, the button. Uh, status tip is get snake. It's going to call uh, an action which is self dot snake. I'm going to show self dot snake which is here. Right. It's going to insert something text and let's see. Okay. So let's, let's, let's run this guy. So that was a bit fast, but I need to go fast. We're really short of time. Um, okay, so we can. Okay. okay, so this is our sleep pack. You can add in stuff to it. A bit small, I can't do it. But if I press this thing, you'll see it's a snake. Right. So we have a custom, uh, uh, custom desktop app. Uh, notepad with Python. So that's how you do that. Next thing I'm going to do is a web app. So now, right, desktop app is not the most portable thing. The most portable thing is a web app. Everything also can open to a uh, HTML file. Right? So we're going to do that in, uh, in here. Okay, we're going to use a library called Flex and uh, we import FLX. And then we're going to define what the text input looks like. The text input has a name and a text. There's some input that you type, that you type into it, and it has a name. Okay. And then whenever you, then this is the important part. Whenever you 
say when we are done with this text input, it will update its text variable, this set text, right? It's magically linked to this text. It will update its text variable into your um, input text box value. Okay? And then after that, we're going to create this thing with three of these uh, text inputs one, two, and three. And then from there, we're going to write a letter, letter template thing. Okay, so let's run these guys. Okay, so this guy runs. So now we have this thing. This uh, looks like a desktop app, but it's not a web app. And we can export it into a HTML file, and it still retains the logic. Okay, so I'm going to type in addition. So, and then So now it is built in this letter template. Uh, and then you can copy and paste it. That's just very okay. Uh, and now we have created a web app using Python. And this can straight export into uh, HTML magically. Yeah. They, they just convert Python into JavaScript. It's quite amazing. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is um, create a visual novel using Manpy. So I'm sorry, we have played games with Manpy, but here we're going to go and see how it's created. Okay, so let's launch the project first. Okay, uh, okay I'm going to show you the code first. So the code here, uh, it is in, notice that it's an RTY file. It's not a .py file, so it's a RAM file, but it also accepts Python, regular Python. So, uh, so you see some syntax which is a bit weird. Uh, all this stuff floating in there, but it also accepts regular Python. Uh, and then you define what characters are inside your novel, you define some variables, and then you have a root throughout your novel. In between your root, you can have a menu to have different choices. Then you jump, jump, it's basically go to go to a certain line of code. Okay, so let's, let's run this game and see what it's like. So it's the snake, we start. Start, please. So that's all it's done. So that's all. Uh, we just created a visual novel using Python. Okay. So uh, next, we will move on forward into the realm of the, the islands of images. In the islands of images, first thing I'm going to show here is uh, this one. Okay. So now we have, uh, we're going to uh, manipulate images. Here we're not going to even manipulate, we're going to draw an image from, from nothing. Right. We're going to draw only just from data. And uh, so, and we're going to use the PL, PIL library, is the Python image library. And the key things we do for are image, 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 draw, image. Okay, so this is our data. This is all the data we're going to use to create this object, this, this image. And we're going to um, this is just some setup to create image. Now we're going to create the new image using image.new. Image.new. This is how big the image is in terms of the uh, width and height. Uh, RGB. And then, and then we're going to draw some lines in the images and then save the image right now. Okay, after we save the image, it's going to be snakey.png. And we're going to go and find out what the key of PNG looks like. So you get Python, and then from just numbers, you can create this uh, shape which describes it's like the profile of this uh, uh, object or this animal. The length is this amount, this length, this height, this tiny. Right? So this, uh, yeah, so think about it. We just created, we just drew an object on just the labels and the title and some numbers. It's pretty easy. Not in a car. 
Okay, it's very nice. Uh, thanks. Next. Uh, okay, we're going to go into uh, Reddit API. Okay. We're going to download some Reddit images using uh, a Reddit API. This is Pro, it's a Reddit API wrapper. So, so here, we're going to go. And then so now it's going into so this red API it is actually letting us go into a certain subreddit or whatever subreddit we choose and then get all the submissions or access all the submissions from this subreddit. So I'm ranking the, sub, the, the submissions by uh, yeah, thumbs up. So if, if there's no thumbs up, then we're going to download those images. So this is going to give up some images. Look very nice. Let's check it out. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Yeah. I can see that it's all the nice scenery. Okay, let's continue on. That's downloading submitted images with Python. Then we have 20, number 20, which is uh, downloading Google images with Python. Same here, I'm just going to run this. You can see it's super easy. This is really built in wrapper. Just use Google image download, keyword beautiful snakes, and Okay, it's going to download a bunch of snake pictures. I'm not going to make it finish, but there's a bunch of snake pictures in our downloads, in our downloads uh, folder. Okay. Uh, okay, then the next one we're going to do is you can also create PDF reports. So we're going to create a PDF report. So what it looks like is we're going to use a library called FPDF. Uh, PDF here. So we're going to import this thing which allows us to create uh, PDFs. We're gonna, uh, so from here, all we need to do is uh, type in some text and then they can create the rest of the PDF for us. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate. I'm going to demonstrate. Yeah, but the key thing is uh, we can create PDFs from the library and we can figure out like, the page and all these uh, images, all these things. And create links for us as necessary. Uh, okay, now we're going to move into the domain of physical uh, locations. Snake's distance is, uh, let's show this one. Okay. So uh, all I have here right, is Raffles Institution. The two inputs are Raffles Institution and uh, Home, uh, College B. And then it, it searches for the exact address, it gives us the exact the relevant address here, yeah? and then it gives us the coordinates uh, in latitude and longitude, and it also gives us the distance from one location to the other. So that's calculating distance using Python. Uh, we're going to do the next one. Quickly. We're going to use the Google API to look for a place. So we're going to look for a place called Snake Singapore. You may not be in here, you may not find it, but it's correct. Right. So. so the key things here is. Okay, so the key thing here right, is. Uh, it is. Uh, we pass in the parameters. And we send a request. So you may know this library called a request. So we send a, a get request to the uh, API URL to so give parameters. Uh, the key parameter is input, snake Singapore. And then we will get output, which is uh, the place. 
and get this place. Here's the name of this gateway snake I mentioned. And get a place ID. This ID can let us find details for the place. So let's go to here. We get the I get details about the place here. And it tells us that it's a clothing store, and it gives us whoever who has rated uh, upon it. This guy is Suresh Kani has rated a one, a one star rating. Uh, so yeah, so that's so we can get details straight from Python um, yeah, about places just by passing in strings. So that's pretty amazing. You can also get directions. I'm not going to show this. Uh, we're going to send. We can send emails uh, using standard library. There's SMTP library. Uh, we create. Um, uh, my multi pack. So this is the the, the data that we send. We attach the message, and then we're going to log in with our username and password, and then we're going to send the mail to this person. Send the mail. Send the mail. Okay. So that's that. Uh, I'm not going to show that either. We can operate the Bitcoin, and I definitely don't have time for that. Uh, but it is a good way to learn how a Bitcoin actually works by looking at the miner.py and the uh, wallet.py. This creates what a, 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 a cryptocurrency is about. It's about uh, mining, processing the transaction, and making transaction. So, and here you can see what happens after each transaction for the miners and for the people with the wallets making the transactions. Okay, I won't go through that. Uh, this one's super interesting, so I'm going to go through it super quickly. Uh, miscellaneous man, this is high tesseract. It allows us to read text from images. So, captures are going to be useless against this guy. Right. So, you can see that it's. Oh, sorry. Why? Go ahead. I don't think this should be clear. Okay, so it's just like that. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're going to run this guy. Create. Okay. And then it's going to tell us. So basically, what is doing uh, the key thing call is time abstract image to string, and then uh, your image image of open and using uh, the Python image library to open the image. And after that, you can convert this image to string. Uh, so when this works, S will have the full perfect um, string from the image. What it looks like um, is this. And in my testing, it works. It converts this 100 percent accuracy. So that's pretty so amazing. Uh, it can work with different forms also, but with limited capability. So if you're giving it something like something like if you give it something like this guy, then it's going to be a bit practically pretty right. uh, But for a lot of ones, it works very very well. Uh, and you can tune and optimize the, the results as well by providing more parameters, more attributes. Okay, last two things is the, the volcano of meta. We can mix notebooks and scripts and pair them together. So I'm going to show you one last thing how. So I'm going to skip the last one. We can create executable so that we can share our Python code with people who don't even install Python in these experience. So we can uh, share it with them, we can run it without even installing Python. Right, I'm not going to go through that. You basically just run pi installer and then your um, Python file. Okay, but this one is quite interesting, so I'm going to go through. You can mix a notebook and a script. A notebook is basically the template of notebook, right? Like what we were showing in the previous talk and just now. 
then the script is like this, just like this regular text. Pretty much script is that it's easy to keep this, right? You can keep this and find out what the differences are easily. Uh, you can also use your favorite text editor on a script. But then there's also good things about notebook. And the notebook is good because um, yeah, the notebook is because it lets us view outputs of code videos very easily. You can find out what is going on. Right. And JupyTex allows us to combine both. Basically, you just install JupyTex and then you go into um, here. I believe it's this one here. Edit notebook metadata. So let me go back again. Edit, and then it's edit notebook metadata. And here you, in your JupyTex uh, option, you just put in uh, formats, you just copy the file. Then what will happen now is if I type in something new here, uh, okay, I didn't walk, and then I save this. If I go back into my um, yeah, if I go back into my Python uh, snake.ty, right? It actually saves it Python out right in my snake.py file. So it has created a duality of these files. It has created a mirror reflection. Every time I save the notebook, it will also save a .py file. So yeah, you can just commit the .py file and you can do it very easily. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I've gone through uh, most of everything I wanted to cover. So it's 30 things from Python. Uh, uh, so that's all. If any other questions, or me. Any questions? Sorry, I overstayed my time. <laughs>